The teams are coming out onto the pitch. Geisley in their home kit of white shirts, blue shorts, blue socks. York City in their away kit tonight of what I can only describe as luminous uh, all yellow. Not quite sure the, dis the thinking behind that decision. Let's see if Geisley can finally manage to pull something out of the hat and get that first three points of the season. Full match commentary now with Chris Bell, but first, Colin Robertson. Thank you, Dave. And tonight, an important game for the Lions, a vital opportunity to beat a struggling rival in York City, to get off the mark, perhaps get those first three points of the season as we look to start the fight back from the bottom here at Nethermore this evening. And uh, we will be bringing you full coverage of that as the two sides just get through the final warm-up paces ahead of this game. Chris, it's ever so important game tonight, isn't it? I can't understate just how pivotal and how vital a result feels here tonight. Absolutely. Uh, every game is crucial, to be fair. You know, we've, we've been saying that since the first two or three games when we had that losing start to the season. That's all we thought it was going to be at that point. You know, every game is absolutely critical now. And to be facing a side who haven't won away from home in apparently their last 28 away games, I believe. And, you know, they're not... They haven't adjusted to this level as well as they would have hoped to. It's a massive opportunity for Geisley to step up with a couple of new strikers, a bit of a curveball, and hopefully pull something out of the bag. And as uh, Tom and Dave were just discussing, those new signings do make somewhat of an unknown quantity to the home fans tonight. Three players making their home debut. Connor Brown, who started at Sutton, of course, last Saturday scored an own goal. Jake Cassidy and Jermaine Hilton, uh, the two late, late additions. Um, what impact will that have, A, on York? We talked about York, but what about our own side? There's a lot of getting to know you going to have to go out there, go on out there on the field. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as much of a, as a, a negative as you think it would be for York in terms of preparing for what they're up against, likewise, the same will happen, you know, with our own lads because we haven't had a training session. We don't really know what to expect of them. Um, you know, they've got good pedigree and, and good calibre with what they've done before, but now they need to prove it and hopefully just sink straight into to our side. It's going to be an interesting 90 minutes. Two sides just about ready to get kicked off. Guys are going to be shooting from right to left in the home kits of white shirts, navy blue shorts and socks. We'll go through the two sides, two sides shortly. Uh, and York City in a uh, bright, bright sort of green-yellow strip. Uh, uh, going to be shooting towards the bowling, end, bowling ground end of the stadium and we are underway with Geisey going long and uh, upfield towards that new signing Cassidy early doors but it's been well defended and Simon Heslop the York City captain comes away with the ball uh, before a free kick is committed by a foul is committed by Alex Perver on Danny Galbraith so York City with Kyle Leatherin, Sean Rooney, Ben Barber, Matt Fry, Clovis Camjo, Simon Heslop, Matty Dixon, Danny Galbraith, Ben Clapperson, Scott Fenwick and Justin Johnson and for Geisy, Jonathan Maxted, Connor Brown, Danny Lowe, Jake Lawler, Will Hatfield, Jordan Preston, Alex Perver, Simon Walton, Rob Atkinson, Jake Cassidy and Jermaine Hilton. Ball out of play from that free kick, so Geisy have a throw in left-back position. And uh, look to launch this one on the left flank. Up towards the head of uh, Cassidy. And then Hilton wins the ball ever so well. A little bit of trickery tries to thread the ball through down the left-hand side towards Cassidy. But what an impressive touch there from uh, Hilton, Jermaine Hilton, to uh, really inspire the home fans there for a moment. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a, a bad first touch in your uh, guys' career. It's just a dance away from a couple of defenders. Hilton. Certainly got the crowd on side early, didn't it? Certainly has. Hilton involved again for a moment. But York managed to hold firm and get the wall away uh, to the frontman, Scott Fenwick. So it rolls all the way back to Maxted. Of course, Jackie McNamara, the York City boss, under ever so much pressure recently. As, uh, we'll be looking at this game as the one to break his away duck. Guysy at the moment, though, setting about the task with purpose. Walton now with the ball, sent out to the right hand side towards Hatfield, in towards Preston. Preston is tackled by uh, Heslop. Guysy still have the ball, and it's whipped into the box, in towards Pervery. Can't control as he jumps up in the air to try and take it down. Ball in, fizzed into the box at pace. But York City come away with the ball with Matty Dixon down the left-hand side. Geisey intercept again. Hatfield punting it up in the sky. Frenetic early start to this game. 
with the ball at the feet of Ben Barber, the York City defender, just inside their own half. They go infield and lose possession to Will Hatfield, but uh, well worked back or well won back by Ben Clapperson, who in the end is a judge to have been pushed over, and it's a free kick to the visitors midway through their, their own half. Yeah, he's just run straight into the brick wall that was Jake Cassidy, bounced off him almost comically as he uh, fell to the ground. But this game has started at a really good pace. Guys, they are looking to move the ball quickly and, and get it into the players like Hilton and Cassidy early on. And the ball goes forward now. As you can probably hear the guys he finds just getting the singing voices on as the ball is fizzed up towards Hilton. He doesn't win it, but guys, he win the second phase again with Hatfield. Now into Perver. Perver to the left here, Danny Lowe. Lowe looks ahead, he's got two to aim for, but he goes down the left-hand side where Hatfield puts on a sprint and uh, doesn't get the ball. But it was a good idea again from Geisy, good movement, good pace, and asking the early questions. Absolutely, they're asking questions. I think, uh, I say that they've started this game so quickly and so up for it. It's really encouraging to see. There's a lot of York fans here tonight. A uh, all-ticket affair for the visitors. And they have, of course, uh, taken a, a great allocation. Yeah, just under 800, I believe, I think, wasn't it? It's in the uh, away end now of the ground. York at the moment, though, making some purpose at the other end and uh, play the ball into the edge of the 18-yard box. It's over the target man, but going to be picked up now by Heslop. He plays the ball into the box. It doesn't find his uh, man, which I think might have been Johnson. But uh, guys, he still have to defend because you'll pick up possession again. Sean Rooney now on the right-hand side to Heslop. Heslop ready to cross, plays the ball low into the box, helped away by Rob Atkinson. Out for a throw-in for the visitors, midway through the Geisley half. And again... The Lions just have to uh, watch this movement down this right flank. Rooney gets the ball back from the throw. Takes it down on the deck on the right-hand side. Just trying to work his way down that right flank. Manages to earn his side another throw. And uh, York have to... Feeling the frenetic start from guys. He's just beginning to work their way into the Lions half. In the final third now. And Rooney again from the throw has a chance to cross, in the end it goes infield and is uh, picked up and shot at goal from distance which Johnny Maxted just watches over the crossbar a little bit more relaxedly than perhaps we might have been from the uh, press box but Ben Barber with a, a fizzing drive from a good sort of 35 yards but uh, over and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, it seemed to uh, just dip fairly late on didn't it right the last second because at first I thought oh, it's going well over and then it dropped and I think uh, Maxted wasn't too far from being caught out. And now, it's uh, Geisy have the ball at the back line, send it long and out of out of play. All the goals in the uh, Vanarama National. Dover 1, Sutton 0, <coughs> Bromley 0, Woking 1. You begin to start to think about the other sides and wonder what's good. What would be good for, would be for Geisy to score, and they pick up the ball with Will Hatfield and have a run down that right-hand side. It doesn't manage to find its way in there. And uh, guys, he do manage to get the ball across, but it's uh, repelled again by the York defence. Still on this right-hand side, though, the Lions have possession. Played back here to Walton, out to the right-hand side. It's uh, played in again this time, into the box by Connor Brown. And up and hit, hit in the head of uh, Will Hatfield, who's trying to win possession back from Barber. But Barber manages to stick to his task, but his clearance isn't so good. Walton wins the ball back, plays a lovely one to Perber on the edge of the D. He slips at the crucial time. And York City come away with the ball. And Perver looks like he might have just twisted something there as he went to connect with that ball. Now Sean Rooney down the right-hand side is uh, tugged back by Danny Lowe. Goes down to ground and uh, guys can see a free kick out on the right-hand side uh, in the final third. And a good position here for York City for the set piece. Yeah, as good as all the uh, attacking play has been from Geisy so far, this is you know, where the problems have lied over uh, recent games defensively. That was uh, a shame that uh, Alex Perver is up and, and, and seemingly fine. <coughs> it's a free kick, though, to York City, which uh, Simon Heslop, the York City captain, will take. He's the experienced player, as Tom was alluding to in the intro. He's got 5 to aim for on the edge of the 18-yard box. It's whipped into the box over everyone, picked up at the 
left-hand side as York City attack this Geisley goal. They have a chance to put the ball into the box again, which they do. It's headed up by Danny Lowe and goes behind. And uh, it's a claim for a corner. The referee gives a goal kick. Have to say, I think they might just have got that one wrong there. I think Danny Lowe got the final touch. Guys, you get the goal kick, though. Yeah, I think those appealing York City players have certainly got a case, haven't they? Certainly seems to take a, a, a nick off the guys. The captain It's the last man, but we won't complain. Certainly won't. Yeah, just thinking back to, uh, to looking at Glovis Cam during that side, and you know, he scored a free header from a corner for Boreham Wood against us last season. Somebody that uh, has been there and done it. I need to learn those lessons because he's a danger yeah. in the air. Boreham Wood, wasn't it, last season, 1-1. One, one. Absolutely. Didn't we snatch a late equaliser? We did, did. and to be fair, Boreham Wood were much better than us that day. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Halfway line. We both stayed up, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that was then. The, uh, you're not missing anything, the ball's just gone harmlessly back to Maxted from a clearance. Thanks to four-way driver and Michael Tiller. Good luck to the Lions from a very cloudy Lanzarote. Heart please for you, Michael. <laughs> and hey up, guys, are we ready for a win? That's positive talk from four-way driver. Guys, now battling on to uh, try and press this York defence, but uh, they've picked up the ball at the back and played it upfield. For a moment, Maxted looked like he was going to come out of his goal and sweep up at uh, Lawler. Opts to intercept and hoof clear. Yeah, he's had a couple of those where he's intercepted and just looked to get it long down that right-hand side in these early stages, Jake Laura, and both of them have just dragged out of play. Still nil-nil, if you're just joining us. About ten minutes gone, and the ball goes back to the goalkeeper there, Carl Leatherin, is chased down, and uh, it was uh, almost a, a sticky wicket for Leatherin because he was... Uh, Forced back by uh, Hilton and Cassidy, but in the end managed to show some neat footwork and get the ball away. Has it at his feet again, the York City goalkeeper. Can't keep the ball in play and he's uh, hit touch. And, uh, it's a throw in to Geise on the right hand side here. Level with the edge of the centre circle. And then to Preston. Preston takes it down, turns on his man and tries to work down that right flank keeps going, cuts in field cross field ball to Perver, Perver tries to thread it either out to the left or towards uh, Hilton in the end did neither and uh, guys he concede possession and York City come away with the ball over the halfway line down this left hand flank, lunging challenge uh, comes in there from uh, Cassidy but guys he still can't win the ball back, it's in here now with Sean Rooney on the right hand side who attacks at Danny Lowe now as he comes to the edge of the penalty area, chips the ball into the box, headed away, picked up the second phase again with Hislop, back out to the right hand side, Rooney up against Lowe, Rooney manages to get past Danny Lowe, goes into the box and the tackle comes in by Simon Walton, well timed tackle it is too, but it is at the expense of a corner kick to York. Yeah it was uh, perfect timing really from Simon Walton because if he had got it you know, that second or two later, he'd have probably caught the line, conceded a penalty. He did well just to get there to, to stab it behind for a corner. Corner on this right-hand side. The Minster men now pressing Geisley. The ball to be delivered in towards the box. is headed and in the back of the net. And Geisley concede in the opening ten minutes. And it's uh, Matt Fry who heads home and managed to make a late run into the box. And it's all going wrong again here at Nethermore for the Lions. Ten minutes into the game, Geisley nil, York one. Well, there we go. You know, as I said, we've been good positive going forward, but defensively from a corner as well, conceding from a set piece again. Nobody picked up the run of Matt Fry, and he just glanced the header. Wonderful header into that top corner, but Matt Fry, he was just given too much space there. It's not the only goal. Braintree are one nil up against Boreham Wood, and Forest Green now have gone two nil up in their early game, the, the start of that game against Aldershot, who beat York City on Saturday. Meanwhile, guys, they are a goal down here at home to York City, who I can't even remember the uh, statistic precisely, but it was such a long time since they've actually won a game away. Twenty-eight, I believe. Ball back underway for the Lions as they press and play it forward. Jordan Preston, cool heads required from the Lions now. Out to the left-hand side and Hilton picks it up, turns, spins, gets the ball into the box. It's blocked well by the defence. But guys who pick up the second phase again. Low, crossing towards the back post, headed away once again. Second ball could be won here by Walton. He plays it towards the right-hand side, intercepted well. It has to be saved by Matty Dixon. 
And guys, you have a throw on the right-hand side. Yeah, as you say, it was a good interception, to be fair, by Dixon. The ball down the left-hand side to Atkinson. Into Pervert. Played forward now, Preston. Some distance from goal. Goes to the right. Connor Brown has the ball at his feet. Goes for the overlap to Hatfield. Hatfield's cross, blocked. He's gone out for a throw-in, just up from the corner flag on the right-hand side. Still uh, the Lions are in the York half and pressing after going that goal down. 1-0 to York if you're just joining us. 13 minutes gone. The ball in field from the throw. Crossed into the box and chested away. Or rather unconventionally, gives Gazi a chance with Brown. Goes into the box, takes a shot. It deflects away and then the deflection is blocked as Hilton looks to finish. And in the end, it's uh, again frustration for the Lions. But they're still on the ball here. Hilton trying to spin away from... Clamjo, but can't on that occasion. But uh, York City can come away with it with Heslop over the halfway line, surging forward until he's stopped by Danny Lowe. And guys, he win possession back. Walton and Atkinson exchanging passes. Uh, goal. The ball goes back to the goalkeeper. It was a wonderful little chance then for uh, Connor Brown. What's it? Great footwork. And again, just too many defenders back. That seems to be the case. You've seen already Hilton has been trying to spin away from defenders and has sadly just been running into more Illuminous Green shirts. One of them being Clovis Camjo, you can hardly avoid him, can you? <laughs> I was going to say, it takes quite some running around, to be fair, doesn't it, to get around Camjo. He's a, he's a rather large centre-half. Yeah, I think you need a, a sat-nav <laughs> to navigate your way around there. Guys, they have a throw midway through the York half on the right-hand side. They're still pressing, still asking some questions. And now have a, a chance to deliver the ball here with Brown, who does well to hold the ball up. Still running at the ball, play the uh, ball into the box in the end, running... Hard down that right-hand side, dribbling through one or two defenders, but couldn't find the delivery that was necessary. But guys, he's doing ever so well here. Winning second phase back again. Simon Walton playing just like he did on Saturday. Winning possession and finding uh, the possession and the ball back in guys' hands. The line's now down this left-hand side. Good work there from Jermaine Hilton. Looking to prove a point clearly tonight. Full of energy and, uh, and invention early doors. Yeah, absolutely. Hilton and, and Connor Brown have, have both impressed me. Uh, in these uh, early stages, let's say, full of energy and, you know, looking to prove a point and help the side out. Perver now battling against uh, Heslop inside the York half, but it's Heslop <coughs> who uh, wins them that occasion. The ball goes long. It's headed away by Brown, finds Hatfield, who's then taken down by the uh, left-back Ben Barber. And Barber will probably be spoken to, may even go in the book here. You reckon, Chris? Yeah, he definitely needs speaking to because uh, he knew exactly what he was doing because Hatfield was ready to get away down that right-hand side and then it was just a word, no no yellow card for him. So, guys, he now with a free kick on the halfway line. Chance to play this one long. It's five on the edge of the 18-yard box. It's up towards Atkinson, who's right on the edge of the area. A really thunderous header comes in from Fry to clear. The man has scored the goal. And then uh, a ball from Brown on that occasion... Not really at all good enough, and uh, it's gone out for a uh, throw-in. You can probably hear a couple of pops as the goalkeeper, Kyle Leatherin, steps out to stand on a two or three blue balloons that have been uh, put onto the pitch. Remember that incident where the... What was it? Sunderland goal, the wasn't ball. it? Yeah, the beach ball. <laughs> hey, I'd take that bit of look right now. Yeah, we wouldn't get it, would we? Well, not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the beach ball would make a, a goal line clearance, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the way things are going. We're a goal down. We're not laughing out of joy. 15 minutes gone. Geisy nil, York City one. Matt Fry with a goal, a header on 10 minutes from a corner. But uh, at the moment, the Lions are asking questions and uh, are causing York problems. Just uh, haven't had the breakthrough while well, York have. And now they have the ball at their feet with Galbraith. He's then tripped by Perva. Free kick, taken very quickly, finds Sean Rooney. Up from right back again, into the right-hand side, plays it in field here to Galbraith. He takes a, an effort from distance. That time, comfortably past the upright and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, it wasn't uh, troubling Matt said in the uh, Geisley goal, but good footwork from Galbraith just to get it out onto his left foot to try and curl it. 
got 17 gone, that's flown by. Yeah. It's just once again an early goal. And uh, it's such a similar tale this season. There's plenty of quality, we just haven't maybe asked enough questions yet. But uh, we look so very bright relative to how we have been. Walton now on the ball, Brown on the halfway line. Guys, you have possession. They need to get it at the other end of the field, and so Rob Atkinson just looks for options. And he goes square to Walton. Now Jake Lawler. This guy's patiently on the ball, looking to craft out opportunities, which they do work out very well now here. Finding Will Hatfield, little flick from Jordan Preston. Hatfield goes down, no free kicks given, much to the displeasure of the home fans here. Hatfield has to get up, it was a well-worked move. Jordan Preston wins the ball back from Rooney, gives it to Perver. Now into the left-hand side, great work here from Hilton. Spins past his man, into the box, plays it square, and it's an equaliser for Geisley! And it's a debut goal for Jake Cassidy! After a super move, Jermaine Hilton, square ball to Jake Cassidy. He fired home from close range. And after 18 minutes, it's Geisley won, York won. Oh, Jermaine Hilton first and foremost take a bow because that was a wonderful turn to spin away from Clovis Camjo. And then he put a perfect ball with the outside of his right foot right onto the six yard line into the path of Cassidy who swept it under the goalkeeper. Wonderful move, wonderful goal. I think I'm in love with uh, Jermaine Hilton. <laughs> he's been really impressive so far. He looks lively, he's got a trick in him. I've been really impressed with him in particular. And there was Cathedry, right place, right time to finish it. So easy, Chris. 18 minutes. <laughs> he hasn't even scored a goal yet. But uh, Tell me you're not impressed with him though so far. He's done very well, hasn't he? <laughs> he looks really sharp. Guys are getting back on level terms. Eight minutes after going a goal behind. Setting up this derby really well this evening as uh, York scored early with Fry. Hilton now has uh, set up Cassidy, his fellow debutant, for an equaliser. There's a free kick, meanwhile, given to Geise in the edge of the 18-yard box in their own half. There's a real derby atmosphere as well about it tonight, isn't there? I mean, to be fair, credit to the York fans, I think they're hoping to make that, but there is a real buzz, I think, around Nethermore tonight. Yeah, the only frustration, I guess, of a game like this is you think, ooh, this was the Boxing Day fixture, wasn't it? Yeah, this is what this you should thought. have been. But uh, in the end, uh, we're going to Lincoln, of all places, <laughs> for that, as Oi. we are in the Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go there? The ball with uh, the goalkeeper, Max, did at the moment. Which that was a stinker of a draw, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't an easy one. Max Dead rolls the ball out to Atkinson as guys who begin to build once again. It's chipped forward up towards uh, the uh, man who created the goal, Jermaine Hilton. He does well, holds on to the ball, lays it back to Danny Lowe. Lowe into Walton. Walton tries to feed Perver, but the interception comes in from Matty Dixon on the halfway line. Guys, he again win the ball back. Winning the ball back ever so well tonight, actually. They look up for it, they're getting there, aren't they, quicker? Cassidy now on the halfway line, lays it out to the right-hand side to Brown. One of three players making his home debut tonight. Brown plays it up towards the uh, final third, but it's nice to, to scramble away. Back out here to Preston, Preston's ball that overhit and rolls through to the goalkeeper, Leatherin. So uh, thanks for everyone who's uh, commenting, uh, four-way driver. Uh, Lincoln, you want to try getting the coach in there? <laughs> <laughs> Might take me camper there. Um, CDP coming through loud and clear in central London. Come on, guys, we must win this game. Very wise word there in there, Gary. Get in. It really does feel like a must win, though, doesn't it? But as I said earlier, I think it's because at this stage every game becomes a must win. 1-1. One, one. 22 minutes gone. And a good first <coughs> half of the first half now for these spectators as guys who win the ball back again. Preston on the edge of the area. Leaves it to Perver! He scores a superb goal from the edge of the D! Alex Perver! He had the ball played into him by Jordan Preston. Opened up his foot, curled the ball into the top right-hand corner. Geisley 2, York City 1. Oh, it's a perfect finish, isn't it, from Alex Perver? And again, some great work. 
on this occasion from Jordan Preston, picks up the ball, could have gone for goal himself with his left, instead he opted to just lay it across the edge of the 18 yard box, and that was perfect, we haven't really seen shooting in his game so far, he should do it more often, that was a wonderful curling effort, he could not have put it any better, postage stamp top corner, and the Lions have taken the lead. Well, this is a superb, superb turnaround here from the Lions. And what a start to this game for the uh, paying spectators this evening. You can't you. carry on like this, yeah. surely. Well, it's like one goal, I'm yeah. very happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's never been ever so easy, though, for Geisley. Plenty of football yet to be played in this game. And York City will no doubt want to make an immediate response. But as it is, it's the Lions who come down this right-hand side and look to ask the questions again. The goal scorer, Jake Cassidy, who got Geisley's first making headway down the right flank and winning Geisley a throw, about level with the penalty spot on the right-hand side. Jake Cassidy and Alex Perver, the two goal scorers this evening. As uh, the Lions seek to press once again, press their advantage at the moment. Throw taken on that right-hand side and back to Connor Brown, who nutmegs his man. He gets tackled on the second. And then a rather strange and hurried clearance from York. Blasts the ball almost at his own man's head. It, well, it and it flies out into the cricket field. It took a touch off that chap's head. Throw comes in this time from that right-hand side. Same position as before. Connor Brown lays it back this time. Back to Walton. Walton's cross. Into box. Out to the back post. Preston takes it down. Chips it up in the air. Goes for the return ball. Just misses it. Chance now for... Uh, Cassidy once again, Guys is still on the ball, Hilton on this left hand side of the penalty area, chance to cross, Hilton, brilliant skill, gets into the box, takes out one, plays it towards the back, and it's fired in, Preston can't force it over, there's a scramble, has it gone over the line, the referee hasn't given it, but the linesman has, Geisley have a third, it was plucked off the line, and Geisley have scored a third this evening, and we have completely turned this game around, Geisley three, York City one. I have not got the foggiest at that across the line or not and frankly I do not care uh, who scored <laughs> I think it might have been Hatfield was it I think Hatfield was the man who was desperately trying to fire it at the post and what I could see I think you might be right we'll give it to Will Hatfield for the moment it I'll was an honest. almighty scramble wasn't it I don't think Bruce is going to have a clue in trying to announce that one either <laughs> so uh, but how I don't care how the linesman saw that from there that is a wonderful turn up for the books Oh, and you got some. Well, there's. Uh, we just got to stop for a moment as a, a chap who's come on to. I don't know. Presumably protest. As uh, guys have got their third, we've just got to probably expect a little bit of frustration from the away fans. It's just a single individual who's been escorted off the field as we speak. Um, but uh, yeah, 25 minutes gone. Guys, he went a goal down thanks to Matt Fry's header, and we have come back in an almighty fashion, the debutants have been absolutely sublime. What work from Jermaine Hilton in build-up play there? I, I told you, there's a reason I'm in love with him. And he proved it then, didn't he? The build-up play was excellent, the footwork. I've never seen a man with such quick feet in a Geisley shirt. He's been outstanding. Well, Let's hope he can keep this up for three months. <laughs> yeah, well, however long he's loaning. There's plenty of time left uh, yet, though. We've got to keep our heads <laughs> on the ground here. and. At the moment, the Lions are having a, a good evening, but... Uh... <coughs> York? We haven't had one of them for a... since Wrexham, I think, here at home last season. Oh, one back again by Perver, picked up now by Jordan Preston, who runs down the left-hand side, just rightly over, runs it. And uh, he was uh, running to collect the ball and was shoved into the uh, fence here by, uh, I think it was Rooney down this uh, right-hand side. And uh, Perver's going to be spoken to, in fact, not the uh, defender. And He's going to book Preston. I'm not quite... Pro Preston, rather. Yeah, Jordan Preston's getting booked. I'm not quite sure why, or the rationale for that, to be honest. Unless he was saying he was trying to keep the ball away. Well, that's bizarre, to be honest. Uh, unless he's seen something I haven't. I have no idea why he's Jordan Preston's been booked. He's seen something we haven't, or Preston said something, but either way... Nothing we can tell you as to why that happened. Back on the play, though. <laughs> ah, Still. Gary. That's the big question. Why can't we play like this every week? Hilton now doing ever so well. That's one reason. Jermaine Hilton making his debut, making such an impression. The ball picked up now by Connor Brown. Walton. 
Walton chips it over the top, looking to get Hilton in play. He's a header away, but Hilton looks for the second phase. Matt Fry doing ever so well to keep him at bay for a moment there. And Geisley now looking to uh, press again this York City defence. Perva loses out in midfield as it's won back by Danny Lowe. And Danny Lowe has a, a run at the defence. Goes for the shot, but he's blocked well by Johnson. Picked up now again now. And Danny Lowe has the ball at the left-hand side now. Johnson comes across to block. Takes a deflection off him. Awkwardly in front of the goalkeeper it bounces. But the York City defence holds firm. And Leatherin has it in his hand. And uh, it's uh, cleared. Upfield and knocked out of play. And uh, it's a, a Geisley throw. You can tell that so far it's been one of those rare <laughs> nights for guys when even Danny, Danny Lowe thinks he can have a crack. Well, <laughs> Space opened up well. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm still not counting my chickens. It's 3-1, uh, <laughs> yes, but, you know, we've been uh, in these situations before. Only half an hour gone, there's an hour of this game to go. As much as I, I want to agree with you, and my head does, I'm just far too excited. I mean, we haven't had this kind of performance or excitement at all this season. Heslop now on the ball for York City. Plays it out to the right-hand side. Sean Rooney from right-back comes running into the Lions' half. Plays it square. And uh, it's picked up now here by uh, Ben Clapperson. He plays it into Heslop. Heslop gets the ball back, looks ahead, and actually goes square again to Clapperson. Ball over the top down the left flank. And there's a chance here for York to deliver into the box. It's blocked this time, but the... Man keeps coming down that left-hand side and manages to work his way into the penalty area before Geisley managed to scramble clear up to the halfway line where it's won back by Jake Cassidy and the Lions look to counter-attack, but there's a good block and this time a chance for York to play the ball forward and up towards Fennick and Fennick spins but can't get the return. The man who comes from uh, local football, Durham City, Hartlepool and then uh, York City played for a number of uh, local non Northern League clubs. Scott Fennick, only 21. On occasion... His touch wasn't that great. It's one of those signings, though, that York made in the summer where he only just raised your eyebrows slightly and thought that's a really good signing on paper for somebody of his age. Now, guys, trying to uh, win possession again in the York half. It's scrambled away. Ben Barber now into the in centre circle where Ben Clapperson collects. He plays it back onto the halfway line. Again, crossfield ball into the feet of Sean Rooney. York with patient build-up play on the halfway line until a very poor ball from Matty Dixon. Plays it straight out of play. Geisley have possession with Walton. Back here to Jake Lawler. Lawler out on the right-hand side. Gives it to Connor Brown. Still inside the Lions' own half. Hatfield and Brown just exchanging passes. And just keeping the ball away from the Minster men. 3-1 to Geisley. If you're just joining us, as we go up to the half-hour mark, the Lions having come from a goal behind. Just say that again, Carl. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't <coughs> quite believe it myself. Now uh, York City, come for, uh, Geisley come forward again. Preston blocks, closes down, takes a shot! Oh, Geisley have a fourth! Jordan Preston, he robbed the defender, ran towards the edge of the 18-yard box. And after the drought, the floodgates open. Geisley four, York City one. Oh, we've got the easy chance going. I mean, that's a little bit hard. But what a remarkable performance and great persistence from Jordan Preston there. He was up against the defender and he just kept going and the ball dropped to him and he struck it left-footed beyond the keeper. Oh, terrific. Geisley has scored four in a game. Hang on, four in a half an hour. It's reminiscent of Wrexham, isn't it, in many respects? <laughs> where we had that superb start back in, oh, when was that, eight, early April? Yeah. The last time we won at home, obviously, was that York, uh, um, Torquay United game. And we scored four then. We're back in uh, underway here, and now York City look to press. Johnson into the box as he goes down to the byline, tries to get a foothold back in this game for the visitors, manages to earn his side a corner. Guys, he mustn't switch off. And uh, we're ready for the corner from this right-hand side. It's whipped in, taken close, helped away. Only as far as the edge of the 18-yard box where Heslop takes an effort. A very good drive, but he couldn't find the target. And it's gone behind for a goal kick. Yeah, it wasn't a bad effort, though, from Simon Heslop at all. It wasn't too far wide as, uh, as Jocke. Obviously trying to find 
some way back into this game. <coughs> For Geisley, 4-1 up. 31 minutes gone. I can't believe it. <laughs> I is. can't. It's staggering, isn't it? Let's give you some of the score lines. Aldershot nil, Forest Green three. Uh, Braintree nil, Boreham Wood one. And Eastley one, Maidstone nil tonight. So. Uh, I love that. Apparently on flash scores it says Perva for the third goal. I've got... No, it was Perva for the second. Perva gets his head on the ball now as guys he come forward again. <laughs> Pressing it down this right-hand side. Good spin on the ball from Hilton. Does ever so well. Gets the ball out towards... Uh, it was towards um, Hatfield. But it's been cleared. And it's out for a guysy throw. But again, Jermaine Hilton just shown sheer class and quality to spin past his man. Hatfield now on the ball. And it's eventually cleared. And out for a guysy throw. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> to be fair, like, I'm, I'm just looking around you know, at, at our other... And our colleagues Dave Kendra and, and Tom and Nick Sharp from the media team. And we're all a bit dumbstruck, to be honest, aren't we? Throw is being taken down by the corner. The ball back into the box. There could be more in the offing here for Geisley. Preston looking for it, but uh, can't get it on this occasion. Johnson, who's sprung into life in recent moments, gets the ball and plays it to the, set, set, the captain, Heslop. Forward now to Rooney. Rooney back here to Johnson, who's getting some... Headway down this right flank, getting more of the ball, certainly. Up against uh, Danny Lowe now. Johnson goes towards the byline, crosses, helped away. Only as far as Heslop. Heslop chests down, and then surely, surely fouls Preston. Preston actually delivers a really good ball up to Hilton. But uh, it's going to be a free kick to Geisley. And we should say, if you're just joining us as well, you might not have heard that we've signed Jake Cassidy and Jermaine Hilton before, well, just before the deadline for tonight's kickoff uh, to allow them to play. That was, you know, a matter of seconds by all account that we managed to get the, the fax machine working. But, but um, you know, Jake Cassidy and Jermaine Hilton, two, two great additions to tonight's, uh, tonight's lineup. Oh, absolutely. You know, Jake Cassidy, is, he's been playing the, uh, the almost the target man style role for him to get the headers that Hilton and Preston have been running on to. And Jermaine Hilton, I don't know where they found him. I know he was at, at Swindon and uh, by all accounts, he hasn't been catching as much this year as he had last year. But he has been excellent. I don't know how much first team football he's had, but he looks so sharp. The guys are pressing again, and Hilton's pressing Camjo. Clovis Camjo manages to get it away. The Lions now have to uh, concentrate here as Barber comes over the halfway line for York City. Pressing down this left hand side, being chased so hard by Jordan Preston, full of running, who was uh, telling us he was chastised by uh, Adam for not defending and not doing the defensive part of his game. He certainly did it just then. Chasing back and winning the ball from Barber, but York City still have it from the throw. Square now here to Sean Rooney, out to the right-hand side. Johnson, he can cut infield, goes along the edge of the 18-yard box, cuts in well. Helped away, though, also by Simon Walton. Geisley don't recover the ball, though. And uh, 35 minutes gone. It's uh, now York City on the attack. It's on this left-hand side with Danny Galbraith. He uh, looks square. Gives it to Matty Dixon, and then the drive comes in. It's blocked here by uh, Hatfield. The second drive comes in from distance from Heslop. This time asking an awful lot of the York City captain, and his uh, ball had blasted wide of the mark and behind for a goal kick. Those first three guys, the goals came in five minutes. That <laughs> never rains, but it pours. They had uh, 18, 22, and 25. Well, I know uh, Flasco has got 18, 21, 23. It's like the lottery numbers. <laughs> yeah. Except for I don't win those. <laughs> uh. Otherwise, we'd be sitting in a, a very plush big stand. Uh, we'll get that eventually. <laughs> it's a Euro Millions, isn't it? 4 1 to Geisley. 4 1. Yes, you're not making it up. I'm not making it up. The Lions have uh, come back from an early goal behind to win to lead at the moment, four goals to one in this first half. But York are on the, on the attack now with Johnson. He's uh, 20 odd yards from goal and running across the goal area, plays it out to the left-hand side to Barber. Barber up to Johnson again, who's busying himself ever so much as he gets into the penalty area and looks to get a shot away. Goes to ground under a challenge, but there's no hint of a, a foul despite his optimistic claims. And uh, in the end, it's Cassidy. 
who is fouled and now gets uh, a free kick. It's very well worth, and, and CDP just making this point, just how good uh, the pedigree is of uh, Jermaine Hilton. And he's, he's pointed out the uh, 45 and 54 appearances, 45 goals and 54 appearances for Reading. He went to Swinton, he only scored one there, but uh, he's an excellent prospect. He's only 23 years old as well. You know, he's, he's got a brilliant touch. Um, and uh, you know it is a very good uh, addition to the uh, to the to the squad. Yeah, it, it's terrific that we can make this judgment after what 40 less than 40 minutes. But that's that's what an impact he's made. Again, CDP playing supplying the stats. The ball goes long from a free kick from Guys and out for a goal kick. It's fair to say he set his performance bar very high so far. <laughs> Jake Cassidy, of course, he hasn't scored yet. Jake Cassidy, though, uh, is. Uh, He's a vastly experienced striker as well. Well, experience. He's 23, uh, under 21 international for Wales, um, with Wolves and Oldham. Plenty of experience in the league. Yeah, I think he had loan spells at Tranmere as well within the league and Morecambe, I believe. So uh, these are two very good additions to the guys they line up. What we've got is experienced players, but without the age. Still players that at this age could be on the way up in the careers. <laughs> But uh, while we're prattling on, nothing really has happened. But York City have now just been awarded a free kick on the halfway line. We'll take it short, actually, in the end. But, uh, we now have to set ourselves to defend because here they come again. Matty Dixon, as they look to get a goal back in this game, might just change the complexion if they could. And now Rooney's just skipped past low on the edge of the area. Takes a shot, takes a deflection, well held by Maxted. Just a little bit of invention there from Sean Rooney and perhaps a little warning sign for Danny Lowe. Just a committed himself perhaps a little bit too much in that challenge. And uh, it goes all the way through to the goalkeeper. Yeah, it was some good footwork from the, uh, the York City right back who pushed a long way forward to get himself into the guys' 18 yard box. Looks like the old media headphones have had it, by the way, Chris. Absolutely. Hatfield Absolutely. plays the ball over the top, looking for Cassidy, gets the ball <laughs> in towards goal at a, quite an acute angle. He manages to uh, make the goalkeeper save it at that near post. Uh, but uh, good work there from Jake Cassidy again. Yeah, I think he was uh, looking to try and return the favour to Hilton because it was Hilton that was uh, pouncing inside the 60-yard box. Flick on now. These guys, you have to, again organise themselves uh, to defend. It's uh, gone out and rolled out for a, a throw. I've got to say as well, you know, besides the two strikers, the other home debutant, Connor Brown, he's impressed me as well. He's looked good down that right-hand side. He's delivered a couple of really good balls and the floodlights have gone out. Oh, dear. Well, we'll just have to hope that uh, we can get the floodlights back on because that would be incredibly frustrating. Uh, with Geise leading 4-1, it's not even just one of them or a section. Every floodlight around Nethermore, we're currently being lit basically by the bowling club. The fact, the, the fact right. you can hear us though means it's a floodlight problem and not a, a local uh, power outage. So we'll just have to wait and see what goes on. Our um, security or safety lights, yeah, that's a good point. But um, we'll, well, we'll just have to wait and see. But at the moment, it's rather disconcerting that, that the floodlights have gone off at this uh, juncture in the game. With Geise leading by four goals to one. We'll just have to wait and see if we can uh, Wouldn't get them. this be typical of us? Yeah, almost. Almost thinking exactly the same thing. In the meantime, let's just uh, let's just uh, have a, a little chat uh, to... Uh, or oh, we'll hear from Dave while we're having the break and uh, just get some uh, different perspective on the... Uh, on the, on the game that we've had tonight. What a fantastic start. I mean, we're just slightly gloomy now because we're literally gloomy. Um, we can't see a thing, and uh, the players are going off the field of play as we speak, but uh, the only people celebrating at the moment are the York City way fans away to our left. Yeah, it looks like the players are being taken off the pitch now by the referee, from what we can see. Uh, the fans have very quickly got the lights on on their phones. I've got mine on as well. Uh, and perhaps, perhaps our fears of cancellation, our fears off postponement may be allayed but <laughs> are we restarting with a throw-in we will probably be restarting <laughs> with whatever happened i guess a drop ball or something somebody's got a good memory because I, I i couldn't remember where the ball was or anything by that stage if you were the referee who would argue with you at that point <laughs> you'd probably just say well let's just do whatever we think was roughly where the ball was <laughs> so 
As we get ready, it's going to be Geisley with the drop ball. I think we're going to punt it up towards the York City end for some reason. Like you say, we have no idea. So we'll just have to take that one as it's uh, as it's offered to us. Or a throw-in that, uh, that Connor Brown will take on the right-hand side. So back we get underway. It's football again. <laughs> Geisley lead four goals to one. And the first half continues. <laughs> and it's headed out for a throw-in for Geisley in right-back position. 4-1 to the good. The lights have come back on. In all that time, we've had national attention with Match of the Day, Twitter account, retweeting our picture of the lights off. We've uh, been under the national glaze, gaze rather, but uh, we haven't been able to gaze on this pitch for an awful long Certainly time. glaze, not glare. Yeah. <laughs> glare, yes. <laughs> The uh, ball is back in play anyway. It's just a bit of head, scrappy head tennis as uh, neither side get possession. It's not really reached any distance either side of the centre circle. Will Hatfield now brings down Danny Galbraith inside the York City half. Free kick, which is taken short to Heslop. And uh, back underway down the left-hand flank with Barber. His, uh, a tackle comes in on Galbraith and Geisley. Managed to head the ball upfield, but York City looking sharp and bright since the uh, stop. They uh, win the ball, and it goes upfield. There's a little tug on the uh, shirt of Jake Cassidy, who goes to ground, but the referee, I think, has he given a free kick there, or has he just indicated the ball is a guy's he throw on that far side? I'm not quite sure I can uh, read the instruction. It might be a free kick, actually, the way we're setting up. Chris? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it is going to be on the halfway line. From a footballing point of view, though, this is going to be really hard for the Lions because, you know, it's effectively you've had a 40, what, 35, 40 minute break where you can reassess tactics and all that kind of thing, and York will be better prepared now. Free kick comes in, floated up towards the edge of the 18 yard box, flicked on by Lawler, picked up by that man, Jermaine Hilton, who's had such an impressive first 40 minutes of this game, put into the box by Perver, flicked up in the air at the back post. <laughs> Jordan Preston seemed to be in space. He didn't attack the ball, but that was because he was closely attended to by Ben Barber. Barber clears. Guys, he win the throw on the right-hand side. 4-1 up. <coughs> and uh, by my reckoning, probably about four minutes to go. I hope Jordan Preston's not forgot he's on a booking. <laughs> just, just, you know, it's, it's been a while. There's been a stoppage. Oh, we didn't go in for a rash tackle and uh, live to regret it. We always look on the positives here at Guysy Radio. <laughs> We're 4 1 up, there's got to be something to be uh, negative to about. <laughs> the uh, throw has been cleared from the corner flag, and uh, York City work their way up to midway into their own half on the left back position. They have a throw. With guys pressing again, Jordan Preston winning the ball. This time it doesn't find Hilton or Cassidy. The clearance scooped up in the air by Jake Lawler, and then Hilton. Wins a loose ball, a loose touch there from Clapperson. He runs with the ball, plays it to the right-hand side. Picked up now by Jordan Preston, who cuts infield. Little dink over the top. It's a lovely one in here for Hilton. The flag goes up. Two of the strikers, Cassidy and Hilton, both bore down on the ball. But the flag was up. And it's a lovely little ball in there from Jordan Preston, too. It was, wasn't it? A remarkable uh, little dink over the top that... Completely caught out with defenders. Just a shame that Jake Cassidy, who was the man that got there first, was uh, straying into an offside position. Free kick is taken. Headers won by Walton once again. Firm header. The board for added time's about to go up. I make about 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, Johnson now wins the ball for York. Into the feet here of uh, Dixon. Ball into the area. At the back post. Finds Fennick. Fennick lays it back. And then his lock who was uh, gamefully running into the end of, edge of the 18-yard box. Made a good position, but only scooped the ball high over the bar and behind for a goal kick. It is stoppage time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're just going to find out what will be added for stoppages. It'll be interesting, actually, to see how they play it. So I'm, I've no idea what that stoppage ball could be, because they might have kept the, the clock ticking for a moment or two after and the stop, yeah. you know, you just... I would imagine maybe two minutes but uh, we'll wait and see <laughs> goal kick at the moment here we are back underway Geisley leading four goals to one the Lions three. three minutes of stopping uh, three minutes of added time now in the first half 
as we uh, head into the time when most games are coming to the end. The Lions are going to have half time and then another 45 yet to come. Atkinson on the ball for Guise. He lays it back to the goalkeeper, Maxted. Plenty of goals elsewhere in the National. We'll bring you the full times at half time. The clearance from Maxted goes long up towards Hilton. Oh, poor clearance. Hilton's on to, to capitalise. Gets into the area. Can't work his way through. He's blocked. No penalty has been given. There's a big shout for uh, a decision there from the referee because Hilton was working his way through the two defenders but couldn't get past one who just put a block across him at the critical moment. Referee probably had the fair view of that. But uh, Jermaine Hilton causing all sorts of problems here for this York City defence and it was Matt Fry who was uncertain in the clearance. Guys, you now win the second phase on the halfway line up towards Preston. He's uh, enjoying his game tonight. Another goal for Jordan Preston. And then uh, Connor Brown is a judge to have fouled on the halfway line. The judge to have fouled Danny Galbraith and so it's a free kick to York City just inside the halfway line. Guys, you have to set themselves to defend. Yeah, they do indeed. You just need to see this... Uh See this through, get through to uh, half time as things are. Dixon Great tackle. Goes in, and he's tackled brilliantly by Hatfield and plays the ball upfield. And there's a chase on here for Cassidy. <coughs> Doesn't get there ahead of Fry, who goes back to the goalkeeper. Leatheran scoops the ball out to the right hand side and it's picked up here by Rooney. Good ball down that right flank. Oh, actually, it's not such a good ball. Way beyond Johnson and guys who recover possession very easily. And it's still as you were. The Lions leading 4-1. It's a long ball upfield towards Preston. Way away from him. The goalkeeper comes out and scoops it clear. Finds only Simon Walton. And then again, good work here from Cassidy as he wins the ball back for Geisey. This time as he runs at the York defence, he's dispossessed. And then there's a late challenge there from Simon Walton on Johnson and a free kick to York City. Rightly so. Five yards in inside the York City half from the halfway line. It's taken quickly now by Dixon, now scooping the ball to the left-hand side. The ball chipped into the box, headed away by Lawler, picked up by Preston inside his own half, a dispossessed by Heslop. But uh, Perva recovers possession and gives it to Danny Lowe. The captain rolls the ball back into the feet of Rob Atkinson, who sends it long and upfield and in towards Hilton. And good work from Perva this time to win the ball back from Heslop, put the this occasion the referees decided that that actually is a, a free kick I don't know how because it was a great tackle and meanwhile York City get back underway Sean Rooney playing the ball down the right hand side it's picked up by Justin Johnson on this right flank again so a lot more of the ball after guys is fourth he started to get into play on this right flank and this time he's earned, uh, earned York a corner deep into stoppage time here it's uh, probably going to be the final efforts from the visitors need to hold firm here not give them a, a sniff back into this game it goes into the near post really poor corner defended ever so well by Hatfield knocked out of play and the half time was and uh, if you're just joining us at half past nine we've still got another 45 minutes yet to play in the 15 minute half time break but half time it's been all action no action we've had four goals from Geisey we've had a half hour or so delay with lights going out it's been a roller coaster evening so far, but uh, the scores on the doors are positive for Geisley. It's Geisley 4, York City 1. Well, welcome back here to Guys AFC Radio. Hopefully you've uh, picked up that we've changed the stream in order for us to get back underway. And we are back underway with Will Hatfield immediately challenging and winning the ball in the York City half. But it's gone down the, the other side now. And uh, York now have the ball on the halfway line and are moving forward. They made a change. We'll talk about that in a moment. Meanwhile, Connor Brown just lofts the ball away. And uh, it's been picked up by Heslop. Guys, the 
now uh, facing a slightly adjusted York City side. We'll, we'll talk that through because, Chris, you made the observations as we were quickly rushing through our technical change over there as we uh, briefly realised that we were short of uh, time left for the second half because of the long stoppage. <laughs> York City on the ball now on the right flank and uh, earn themselves a corner in front of their travelling fans on the right-hand side as they attack the Geisley goal. Chance now for <coughs> City to press the Lions and uh, are looking to get a goal back in this game. <coughs> and come back to 4-2. The corner comes in from the right-hand side, whipped into the box, headed away well. There by uh, Walton, picked up on the edge of the area by Matty Dixon. Back into Heslop on the left-hand side now. York City making some headway. The substitute, Jan Klukowski, takes a cross that takes a deflection off Jake Lawler and then is judged to have taken a knock off Klukowski. <coughs> and uh, it's indeed, it's a goal kick for Geisley. Which the frustration of the uh, City fans uh, away to us, uh, our left. So uh, Jan Krakowski is on, a midfielder, past experienced midfielder, and uh, he's uh, spent time playing in the US as well. Chris, just tell me who he came on for, though. <laughs> uh, he came on for uh, Scott Fennick, uh, and then Ben Clapperson went off, and he's been replaced by Fraser Murdoch, who is uh, another striker. I think he's on loan from Crew Alexandra. So two changes. York effectively having to roll the dice then, aren't they, in the second half, 4-1 down. Throw comes in from this left-hand side, Cam Joe <coughs> headers away with uh, some real purpose. Daisy trying to press and win the ball back inside the York half, but they do ever so well to move it out until they're stopped in the tracks with Hatfield challenging on the uh, edge of the centre circle. Throw comes in, goes over the cluster of bodies and York win it with Johnson but he's then bundled over and it's a free kick. Level with the edge of the centre circle out on the far touchline. So a chance for York to play long one. Heslop stands over it and he's looking to distribute this. He's only got one or two to aim for. Encouraging Matt Fry who scored York's goal in the first half to come forward and attack this with his head like he did in the opening stages of the first half. The ball comes in, headed away, picked up by Preston as guys look to counter-attack. Preston writes one challenge. Camjo straight across and wins the second. Great tackle comes in from Connor Brown, who plays the ball forward. It's caught by Camjo late. Advantage played. Preston, crossfield ball across to the left-hand side. Chested down here by uh, Cassidy. Into the box, but he's back to goal because he's got two around him now. Goes back now to, uh, to uh, Brown. The ball on the right-hand side, sorry, to Hilton. Ball on the right-hand side, left-hand side rather is uh, crossed and blocked and it's out as uh, Chris Bell chuckles at my uh, attempts to commentate <laughs> keep a calm calm phrase on it but the ball's gone out for a guysy throw what was impressive though just uh, before Hilton got into a little bit of on that pass I was uh, Cassidy just shoulder barging the defenders off just using that that strength and height that he has to uh, to be able to hold the ball up got a tonight 1626 looking to battle hard and win the ball back here Perver into the box plays it across the face of goal nobody in that position though for Perver to pick out in fact there wasn't a single white shirt in that area picked up by York City who come over the halfway line play a long ball forward Jake Lawler watches it ever so calmly chests away lays it forward towards Hilton easy to be intercepted on that occasion uh, by Dixon now York come down the left hand side with Barbara Barbara is uh, getting the ball Sort of 35 yards from goal and square to Galbraith. Picks up the ball again on this left-hand side. Chance to cross. Does. Into the penalty area. Laid off towards the edge of the D. And again, guys having to defend uh, with Will Hatfield battling and bustling to win it back from Fraser Murdoch. And uh, in the end, it's forced back. Heslop takes over. Good crossfield ball to the right-hand side where Johnson cuts in turn in field until he is stopped by Perver. Hilton is a judge to a fouled Fry. And a free kick is given. Oh, surely he's not going to book him for that. And referee Dave Richardson calls Hilton over. <laughs> um, but uh, I think not. can't really be It was any. just the manner of the, the, the way he was walking over to him in strict and stern fashion. He just tried to use uh, his body to, be able to try and get 
to the ball ahead of the defender. We've been good company this evening, so thank you for uh, all your comments. Can't tell us asking how many lights we've got. We've got all the lights on, Mike. The clearance comes in from uh, a couple of balls guys out. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm not saying our lights are all on. Perv has just managed to hoof the ball away and uh, put it into touch. Guys, you have uh, conceded a throw, and York take it quickly. The cross comes in, it's blocked. Now for another throw for York City, just up from the corner flag on the right-hand side. Still 4-1 to Geisley. All the goals in that first half, uh, with uh, 52 minutes gone here. The Lions looking uh, like they're in good shape in this first, second period, but still having to ride a bit of pressure here, and a cross shot comes in from Danny Galbraith as he picks up the ball, gets into the penalty area, but doesn't really find an angle to convincingly shoot at goal and it's behind into the away fans on the railway side of the ground. Oh, it didn't look too much uh, too far over the crossbar as it struck the bottom of the scoreboard. But so far, it, it's been as I would have expected, to be honest, because York have obviously got to come out and attack. Uh, Geisley have, have tried to play on the counter and they can do that with uh, people like Preston and Hilton. Clearance has gone straight to York City. It's forced Rob Atkinson into headering out into touch. As you can see, the throw is about level with the edge of the penalty area on the right-hand side. The luminous yellow York City shirts move forward. <coughs> They'd have been fine through that power cut, through the lights off. <laughs> Perver intercepts, and uh, in the end, the ball's rolled out for a goal kick to Geisley. Hopefully it'll be a much quieter second half, and we could just ride this one out. Four ones are... A convincing scoreline. Back to another couple of goals, though, you know, for us, wouldn't you? We're going <laughs> to expect York to, to come back and yeah. press us, aren't we? Yeah, of course, because given the, the circumstances, you know, I said that they had about 35 minutes whilst the lights were out to just reorganise and, and, and for Jackie McNamara to try and get his ideas across of, all right, you know, how are we going to make the most of this? Because obviously Geisley's, the pace and the intensity that they were playing with has, has been lost. Um, and so it's almost like starting again, only uh, we've got a three-goal lead. <coughs> Meanwhile, guys, who just concede possession out on the uh, right-hand side. A throw in for York City in right-back position. It's uh, headed up in the air, nodded on by Hatfield. And he's still battling hard to try and uh, win possession in midfield but it's York City who come out on top here with Danny Galbraith in the centre circle rolling the ball out onto the right hand side to Johnson who's making a bit of a run down this right flank gets past Perver gets past Danny Lowe gets pulled down on the edge of the area free kick to York City about level with the angle of the penalty area on the right hand side so this is going to be a, a dangerous position for Geisy to defend yeah it is uh, it's going to be a a good opportunity for York trying to swing the ball into the 18-yard box uh, across the, the face of goal, perhaps. And there was a lot of the uh, Illuminous yellow shirts making their way into the box. You guys, you have well, York have fought five players to aim for. And so plenty to do to defend this one. The corner, the free kick, rather, very close to the edge of the penalty area on the right-hand side at the top end of the penalty area. It's whipped in towards the six-yard box, punched away by Maxted acrobatically so. Johnson picks up the second phase, puts it back into the penalty area, and it's hoisted away by the Lions, all the way back to Clovis Camjo in the York City defence, who sends it back to the goalkeeper. Jordan Preston closes down, forces the clearance to be more hurried than it might otherwise have been, and plays a beautiful ball back in to Hilton, who runs through and goal for Geisley! And it's a fifth for the Lions! And it is Jermaine Hilton on his debut. He set plenty up. This time he has finished one. Geisley 5, York City 1. <laughs> he's deserved that, hasn't he? The performance he's put in this evening has been absolutely excellent. What a wonderful ball through. Was it, was it Connor Brown that just played a perfectly weighted ball through to Hilton? And Hilton, with his pace to get away from the defender, did enough and finished it beautifully. This is exquisite football that Geisley are playing. And, uh, you know, they're getting the reception they deserve. And this is the cue for a, a handful of the York City fans to uh, head for home. 5-1 down. I do feel for them. Grand old club is York City. <laughs> FA Cup semi-finalists back in the 50s, you know. Really? Yeah, when Newcastle United won it, I think they were the opposition. 
They've got a, a good history back in the second division, the championship back in the 70s. And here they are, probably feeling incredibly frustrated at being 5-1 down. But for us, wow, this is superb. We've waited for a victory. Surely we're going to get one tonight. <laughs> Gary Birdsell, we want seven. <laughs> York now beginning to ask a couple of questions of their own. Looking for restoring some pride in this game. 5-1 down. The chest of Jake Lawler denies him on the edge of the D as he plays the ball away. Tackle comes in on uh, Cassidy. But guys, he's still working hard. In midfield trying to win ball back, but Heslop collects. Rolls it out to the right flank, picked up by Johnson, Justin Johnson running at Danny Lowe. Goes past him, goes down towards the byline. Johnson tries to cross, Danny Lowe gets a good tackle in on him, wins the ball back, takes to the corner flag, and then uh, completes the clearance, much to the pleasure of the Geisy fans. And then uh, a foul is committed by Matt Fry inside the Lions half and a free kick to the Lions. I'm almost lost to words. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I kind of think, am I dreaming? Is somebody going to wake me up and I have to go to work tomorrow? It, it, it's, it really is brilliant. Like, the football that we've played going forward, and defensively we've looked so enough, we haven't been tested that often to be fair, but we've stayed switched on at the back, which let's be fair, look at the first 10 minutes, we were on top for it, but we switched off and let them get into the lead. I mean, it's remarkable to think that York had the lead in this game. It really is. Perva now on the ball for Geise as we press a little bit ourselves again. It's picked up here by Hilton. Good work from Hilton. Goes down to the byline. Looks for the cross. He's held up for a moment. Still uses his good footwork to retain possession for Geise. Down by the corner flag. Almost threads the ball through to Preston. The clearance only goes as far as Perva. Then Walton. Crossfield pass out to the right-hand side where Connor Brown cuts in field. Up against uh, the fullback there. He has to go back to Hatfield. Back to Walton, and then infield towards Jordan Preston. Guys, he's knocking the ball around with conviction here. Perver goes running and uh, has a run at the back line and is eventually dispossessed after beating one. But Guys, he's still in possession of the ball at the back, even as they're pressed. The home fans are uh, enjoying the evening. And Jake Lawler completes a clearance down the right flank that I think will roll out ultimately for a goal kick. And it's a... Uh, very impressive spell of play there for the Lions. It is indeed. It, 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 I'm just thinking of what this could mean going forward. You know, we've got a great attendance tonight. It's what, 1,700, uh, just, just under 1,700. And, you know, we know that York brought <coughs> less than half of that, to be fair. So that means that the Geisley fans, is a, a good number, we're up on, on recent attendances. And what a game if, if you're a first-time if you're a newcomer to Nethermo, what a game to come and witness to, to make you want to come back and see more. That's a very good point. Very good point, Chris. It's been a gloomy place. It has to be something pretty gloomy at some stages this evening, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a, a very rewarding evening if you're just uh, tuning in, uh, having been elsewhere. Uh, we are uh, currently 5-1 up against York City as they roll the dice for the last time. Is that... Uh, what number? Sorry, Chris. Was that Kane Felix coming was, on? Uh, Justin Johnson going off, and yeah, Kane Felix, I think, was the man to come on. A tricky winger from Boston United. Oh, we know well, but guys, meanwhile, set back to their task of winning possession, and they do it well with Connor Brown on the halfway line, who puts it square to Hatfield. Hatfield into the feet of into the feet of Hilton, who uh, tries to spin on the ball, but is held up ultimately by Sean Rooney. And the ball, in the end, <coughs> rolls all the way back to uh, the goalkeeper. Clearance, headed on by Brown, and out for a goal kick. We've been asked about the goal scorers. We've had five different goal scorers by our reckoning. We might be wrong on the Hatfield one. We're not quite sure. The guys who did feed the scorer through thought it was Perver, but they're only two feet in front of us and weren't sure either. So <laughs> it's Hatfield, Preston, Cassidy, Hilton and Perver at the moment. That's amazing. As uh, a long ball goes over the top, should have been comfortable to defend, but uh, looks uncomfortable for Ben Barber. He didn't look too certain about it. He's nodded the ball out for a, a throw in just up from the corner flag on the right hand side as the Lions attack the uh, York City goal. 
Just waiting for the throw to, to either come short or not as we go over the hour mark here. Throw into the feet of Cassidy, who gets the ball back rather fortuitously. He's into the penalty area, takes a shot from uh, the angle of the six-yard box, which deflects and goes behind for a goal kick. Cassidy just held himself up to feel a, a little niggle in his back and then suddenly found the ball at his feet. He's done really well because he had three or four illuminous yellow shirts around him and... Uh, He's done so well to, to, to work the space and to, to earn a corner out of that. Corner from this right-hand side floats in up towards the back post. Lawler heads, headed away, only as far as Hatfield, who floats the ball back in. Picked up here by uh, Heslop. Heslop headed up in the air by Danny Lowe, up towards Perver. Perver doesn't win on that occasion the aerial battle. Kukowski does. But guys, who win the second phase up again, again with Rob Atkinson winning every other ball at the moment. The Lions, it's a delight to watch from our perspective, a real confidence boost. I have to wonder about York City, though. They're uh, not getting a sniff of the ball just at the moment as it's rolled back to Maxted, who then in turn hoofs the ball forward and then uh, is headed on by Camjo. Imagine the uh, behind the uh, Tony Geisley. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even guys have beaten you. That's the, uh, often the, the refrain we've heard. This has been a much different Geisley side to the one we have seen. It's been increasingly improving in recent weeks, but two excellent additions this evening have uh, really bolstered the Lions' front starting 11. With three players making their home debut tonight, the Lions are 5-1 up against York City. I don't think I'll give in uh, Jake Cassidy uh, enough credit so far because he got himself on the score sheet, but as he, 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 he just seems to be, he knows how to play to his strengths. Hilton up against uh, Camjo. Seems to, get seems to struggle with the physicality of Camjo. And surely must have been, he looked like he'd got a little push or a pull on him. The referee hasn't given that. <laughs> well, you've only got eyes for Jermaine Hilton, haven't you, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. To be fair to, to Cassie, though, what I was uh, going to allude to is that, you know, he's used his physicality well. He's been the perfect big man to, to Hilton being the man alongside him. Three kicks being given. Alex Perver just in front of the halfway line here. And don't you think the other thing that's been quite impressive tonight is that for two strikers that have never played together before in the career, to join Geisley on the same day and be thrust straight into the starting lineup, you know, a couple of hours later, the way they've linked up has been really, really impressive. Oh, fantastic, hasn't it? Guys are now with a free kick a few yards in from the halfway line. Players on the edge of the 18-yard box to aim for. Walton dips this one in towards the penalty spot, headed away. And the, header, and the clearance is completed by Matty Dixon. Perver battling hard, winning it back. Finding Connor Brown on the centre circle. Guys again win possession. Ball forward from Walton, headed away by Rooney. Guys he win the second ball again. Jordan Preston just letting that one, ensuring that one goes out for a lion's throw. <laughs> Still 5-1. We've got to be able to build on this, though, haven't we? I mean, this is this is almost pointless if we uh, if we don't back it up with a result against Southport. So, guys are now on the ball for a moment. It just looked like there was a, a spell of passing play building up until... Uh, I think it was Hatfield just lost the flight of the ball. York win it back, but Atkinson imposes himself once again on the game and wins it back inside the centre circle. It's strange to see the Lions looking so comfortable in the match. We haven't seen this for such a long time. Now there's uh, work from Cassidy to try and win possession. Oh, that's harsh. And he's judged to have uh, nudged Barber. It's a free kick to York inside their own half. Yeah, that's a little bit harsh for me. York get the play back underway. But they just dink it forward into the feet of uh, Murdoch, who lays it infield. Hatfield goes to try and challenge Galbraith, but he rides the challenge as Galbraith plays it down the right-hand side to Johnson. Johnson into the box between the two strikers who then start the inquest. Jan Kuklowski, who is coming towards the near post, points at the... Uh, and across the ball, Justin Johnson in protest. And... Uh, in the end, he uh, gets the roll, roll out to the other side of the plate. Lovely, just as we've been sitting and you were having a chat with him. Great to see uh, Steve Kittrick down tonight. 
come to watch the game. Yeah, so like a good luck charm. <laughs> yeah. He can come again, can't he? <laughs> and he can take those media headphones you normally wear away with you as well. <laughs> Chris has got his media special headphones that he wears when he does the commentary, and uh, tonight we told him he, could, well, he decided not to wear them. I decided that I'll just leave them in the bag and see if that breaks the trend, and uh, sure well, seems to have worked as well. Guys, they are winning five goals to one. Oh, you know, we said that in recent years. Not even in our pomp. When was the last time we scored five goals? Not even in our pomp in the National League of, in the North did we uh, rarely rack up more than, you know, three. Job for you, Nick. You need to research and find out when do we last score five goals in a game? No, TDP will tell us. <coughs> there we go. I think it was probably Vauxhall Motors, I'm feeling. I think we beat them 7 0, something of that rate. Or 5 1 against Vauxhall Motors. Droylsden, yeah. Tom, Yorkshire Radio's Tom Feeney's telling me. We're not missing anything. It's really quite a, a, a strange sort of game at the moment. Sort of turned into a practice match. York City holding onto the ball at the back. Now playing a long ball over the top. And uh, this time it's running way ahead of the defence and out. And how often have we seen that this season, the long ball over the top causing us trouble? Not an indication of that tonight, um, thus far. We've got a 6-1 against AFC Telford. That was April 2014. Oh, yeah, that was when Telford were going really well. And uh, we were in a bit of a ropey form at the time. Good work, Nick Keith. Good work. And we needed to get back up there, and we absolutely devastated them. Telford, I think, were the team that went promoted that season. They were the team that won the league. Another one of Steve Kittrick's old sides. Connor Brown's won the ball on the halfway line from the uh, goal kick clearance. Cut in field. Laid square into Perver, into the feet of Jordan Preston. He's fouled, but the referee plays an advantage because Brown's got it on the right flank. Can't get the cross in. Goes back to Preston. It's just beyond him to Walton. Again, Geise just holding on to the, the ball. Rolling it back. It's funny, isn't it? Usually, a pass from the halfway line back to the goalkeeper would be mixed, uh, met with a handful of groans. Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Anything goes. There's a bit of a debate about the goal scorers tonight. I'm telling you guys, we just don't, we're not entirely sure. Perver, we thought. <laughs> Even Thomas Feeney says Hatfield got one too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's TJS FM Russ on uh, the chat room. If Feeney said it, it must be true. <laughs> Atkinson's just picked up the ball inside his own half, runs forward. Lattering tackle in on Hilton. As and he, he battles to, to, to win the ball back. It was Fry who thundered into him to try and win the ball after Atkinson stepped up. Barese esque and uh, took the ball forward. And Galbraith on the ball for York City as they come away with it. Galbraith just uh, involved in a little bit of triangle passing with uh, his teammates but not making any headway. Canjo on the halfway line. Got the dink forward there from York's uh, substitute Kane Felix. And it's uh, easily defended by the Lions, played upfield towards Cassidy, nod it out for a Geisey throw. Mm, it was nonchalant from uh, Clovis Camjo to <coughs> nod it out for a throw, and he probably had uh, options around him he could have found instead. Oh, I feel like we've been through the mill tonight, but it's been brilliant. 5 1 up, and we've still got such a long spell of this game to go. 20 to go. Yeah. Geisley dominant, comfortable, and four goals to the good. There's an offside decision as the ball was moved forward. And it has to say, the sort of uh, ferocity, the pace of this game has really not unexpectedly declined. Guys are managing the game very well um, at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as I say, it, it isn't surprising. Um, we haven't quite seen the onslaught that I was expecting from York, honestly. The response has been lacking thus far, but but I think that's because guys have played so well. Preston winning the ball in the halfway line plays a lovely ball down the left hand side. Now Cassidy will run on it, plays a ball across towards Helton, stoops but just manages to scoop the ball wide with his head. But a brilliant move there from the Lions, and it all stems from Jordan Preston, who works a great cross out to Cassidy. Cassidy with a good run down that left flank, a cross into the box. Helton urging himself to get onto the end of it, so he dived in on the edge of the six yard box. His uh, just making connection, but not sending it goalward. 
gone behind for a goal kick and York get back underway, but a brilliant little piece of play there from Geisy. Oh, wasn't it just in there? Uh, you don't see diving headers in the game so often now, do you? And then uh, Kukowski moves forward for York down the right-hand side, but slips over and uh, falls to the ground. I think the Lions are going to make a change uh, fairly shortly. I've got no idea who would be uh, an option to come off, quite honestly. If Nicky Cleese going to be the man who no, looks for it to come on, <coughs> but who would you take off? <laughs> I'll give some players a, a rest. Possibly Hilton will get a rest if he's not had 90 minutes for a while. He's just uh, clipped Galbraith, given a free kick to York City, which they take inside their own half. The cross comes in, headed away by Walton. Up here to um, Cassidy, who chests it down. Tackle comes in by Heslock. And then the ball on the right-hand side picked up by Johnson. But guys intercept well, Danny Lowe. The ball's rolled back to the goalkeeper, though. And he's under a bit of pressure from Kukowski. Scoops the ball up in the air. Guys, he managing just to hold on to possession. And though the York City pressure is telling a little bit on the back there. There's a bit of a hurried clearance up the halfway line. Lions again win the ball, still maintaining possession until they concede the throw. Yeah, looks like we're going to get that uh, substitution now. So it's Nicky Clay who's going to come on, and Connor Brown, his uh, home debut comes to an end. He's had a really good game for me as well. Defensively, been very solid, and going forward, he's been even better almost, uh, putting a brilliant through ball for uh, Jermaine Hilton's goal. Looks like Will Hatfield moves to right back then. Nicky Clay will go in the centre of the park, maybe move to uh, left mid. But, um, it's good to see Hatfield back on the field and able to give us those options. We, we missed him. Ah, good old CDP. Coming up with his stats again, I remember some of these games. The last time we scored five was against Vauxhall Motors. I did say that, actually. I thought we'd, we'd beaten them. I thought it was more April than that. 2014. Four days earlier, we'd scored six against Telford. And we scored five against Bishop Stortford on the 5th of January. That was a, a North game, believe it or not, against Bishop Stortford. Oh, and, I remember uh, those days. It was a long trip down. Still nothing compared to what we have to do now, though. But we wouldn't change it for the world. I think we're told to be quiet when we were at Bishop <coughs> Stortford. We were. <laughs> or I believe hearing yeah. that you were around. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't think I was there, thankfully. But uh, Here come York on the right-hand side. Movement down that right flank from Kane Felix, but guys who defend well. York have the ball though, and they're winning the second ball for a brief spell here. And it's played forward, but goes back to the halfway line with Galbraith. And they find out Angles Perverso causing them problems. Cassidy now presses Fry. Fry goes, but Cassidy still full of running. We've got Ashley Palmer, Michael Rankin, Dan Adam Boys on the bench. I'd imagine we'll see Adam Boys at some point. Yeah, you would think so. It goes all the way back to Maxstead. And, uh, it's up into the middle of the park. Preston trying to win the ball in there. Simon Walton does, and he's immediately looking to pick out the pass of Almost Hilton. Did it. Perver now on the right-hand side, has the ball for Geisley. He goes infield now, gives it to Nicky Clee. An early touch for Clee. He goes back onto the right-hand side to right-back Will Hatfield now. And then a raking crossfield ball from Walton. Brilliant pass. Picks out uh, Preston on that left-hand side. Preston cuts in field towards the edge of the area. Takes a shot from distance. Not too far over. Good invention from Jordan Preston. He uh, decided to cut in and have a, a go himself. He had a couple of other options in the box. Behind for a goal kick. Yeah, really decent effort that from uh, Jordan <coughs> Preston. He said cutting in onto his right foot. Not too far over the top. CDP just pointed out, scored seven against Doylesden on August 21st, 2013. That was a Tuesday night, if I remember right. I thought we going to win the league at that point. Brilliant. <coughs> now, York City come with the ball down the left flank this time. Headed away with the crosses put in by Barber. By Atkinson. Hilton working back in right back position for a moment there. Gets the ball up to the halfway line. Heslop has possession though for York. And now it's Rooney on that right hand side. Felix will get the cross in if he can. He goes up into the area at the back post. York have uh, space at the back to work in here with Galbraith. He crosses. Good block comes in from Walton on the edge of the six yard box, but at the expense of a corner. Yeah, 
well though, Walton didn't see to get back and just put in the tackle and uh, clear it away. You know, see a couple of guys with changes. You know, they're going to happen now or after the corner, but Michael Rankin is one of them. Well, hopefully after the corner. It's one of those simple rules, isn't it? You never change a, a team line up before a corner, if you can help it. Galbraith with the corner for York. Floats this one in towards the penalty spot. Goes over the cluster of players. And then has uh, got away. Hilton now will chase this one. Camjo <coughs> with the header. Goes forward. But a good tackle comes in from Simon Walton. Nicky Klee picks the ball up. Preston on the halfway line. Four ahead of him, though. Few options. Preston goes to run. Runs past Heslop. Gets into the box. He's got Felix in attendance, though. And in the end, just gets the ball stuck between his legs. Bounces off one ankle and bounces onto the other and out behind for a goal kick. Impressive turn of pace, though, from John Preston for a, a man that's put in the shift that he has to be able to just do that. And completely burned past Heslop. The first substitution, Rankin is going to come to replace Jake Cassidy. Well, Jake Cassidy scored on his debut after only 18 minutes, getting guys the second goal of this, uh, the equalising goal, sorry, of this evening's game. And he's uh, getting a warm round of applause, as you might expect. He's had a, a super performance. And Michael Rankin comes on uh, to warm applause as well. And uh, Geisley has made their second change of the evening with, what, 13 minutes to go. Yeah, I think Cassie's had a, an excellent debut so on the score sheet. First of our goal scorers tonight. And goes over the top and, and rolls all the way through to Maxted, who sort of fumbled his lines for a second there. But, uh, grabs it at the second. Some other great evenings. Bet Blythe Spartans, the team that ultimately were relegated in 2011-12. Uh, they can't finish bottom. They beat them 5-0 early on in August. We've just been a bit late this season, that's all. <laughs> just giving everyone a house a head start. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to make it too easy for him. <laughs> Guys, he has the uh, job of defending to do, though, for this last 13 minutes. It seems that the, homes, the visitors will want to restore a sense of pride. Certainly playing with a little bit more purpose, but it has to be said, the line so far playing, it feels like we're playing almost within ourselves, which I, I don't say. Um, ball over the top here. It's going to be comfortable for, for Lawler to clear, but uh, Maxted was off his line. It's only as far as Galbraith. Galbraith again, very closely attended to by Alex Perver. He keeps hold of the ball though, Galbraith, and then sends it out here to Dixon. Now on the left side, Barber pokes the ball forward, looks for the return pass. From Krakowski, it goes back here to Heslop. Heslop's cross into the box from distance is dealt with by Atkinson and a firm header back from Walton. Just tidies everything at back and it's uh, back to the goalkeeper. He's, he's really grown into that guy's shirt, hasn't Sam Walton, because, you know, he looks a bit shaky in the first couple of games, but he hasn't had a great deal of game time. And now he's looking like the midfield that we signed him for, that kind of just cleaning up and, and, and sweeping up in front of that back four. Something that, as I say, for me, is is impressed me the more I've seen of him. Danny Smith's just pointing out this game's a bit like the supporters club match, but we're on the positive side of it now. <laughs> yes, that supporters club match had an excellent right back. <laughs> he's ball down the left-hand side with Hilton. He's making a bit of a run, plays it into the area. Going to be quite attacking the right point of the uh, spot, penalty spot, really, to pick up on Hilton's pass. And in the end, York managed to clear. Because don't want to get too sloppy in these last 10 minutes. If they have a chance, we need to press it. Meanwhile, York City begin to move their ball, the ball, move the ball rather down the left-hand side. Barber has it. He's uh, looking ahead of him, plays it square, picked up by Klukowski, played up to this left-hand side again, back to Barber. Purpose on the movement here from York, blocked by Will Hatfield. All right back, and it's uh, out for a, uh, a throw. Oh, sorry, it's a corner. All right, beg your pardon. Corner comes in from this left-hand side, headed away by Lawler and uh, then Preston has uh, clearly been pulled back by Heslop and it's going to be a, a free kick and uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if normally that might have resulted in a yellow card for the uh, York City midfielder but as it is we're going to have a final substitute for the Lions and it is Adam Boys and he replaces Jermaine Hilton and well I think you can you can hear the uh, reaction to Jermaine Hilton's debut safe to say it's a success Standing ovation from people in the uh, stand in front of us as Jermaine Hilton goes off and is warmly congratulated by Adam Lockwood down there in the dugout. 
And uh, Adam Boys gets the last uh, what, uh, 10 minutes of this game. As uh, guys, they get back underway with Jake Lawler playing the ball long up towards the ranking. This time the ball is flicked on by Cam Joe. Michael Rankin picks it up down by the corner flag. He crosses into the box. Boys is at the back post, wins the header. Heads it away for goal but finds Pervert. Pervert spins on the ball, runs at the back line, tries to pick the ball out of his feet, goes to the right back. Will Hatfield who's chasing down that right flank but it forces a corner. Yeah, the challenge comes in there from Heslop. Yeah, he did really well there, uh, Will Hatfield. He could see that Perv was looking to try and get the ball out of his right-hand side. Made the run really well. And uh, saved as well to earn a corner. Guys, he have four white shirts in the box. Overloading the box at this stage of the game. 5-1 up. Unless he can get sick, though. As, uh, we prepare to wait for the uh, delivery to come in. Seems to be taking a little while. Referee tries to hurry it along. Ball comes in towards the back post over everyone. Nicky Cleese right at the other side of the field. He gets it back in there. Adam Boy's back in there. And a volley goal from Rob Atkinson. An absolutely superb finish from the centre half. It was nodded down by Adam Boy's. And Atkinson on the full volley drills it home. Geisley 6, York City 1. Right on cue. Rob Atkinson popping up right place, right time. And it's a lovely volley finish not what you would expect of, uh, of the big centre half but guys like, have hit six against the Minster man wow <laughs> I don't know what to say well this has been a little bit of a tonic to what's been a pretty torrid season so far but uh, what a <laughs> performance from Geisley tonight 6-1 up and it's still not finished here you can hear the away fans to our left and I think they're presumably shouting Ma 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 Jackie, Ma out. Jackie out yeah. they're not happy at all Many have stayed, though. All credit to him. Guys, the leading 6-1 tonight now, and uh, we've seen everything in Rob Atkinson volley. This is the thing. There was always going to be pressure, obviously, given the circumstances for York at the moment. But any defeat would have been bad from their respect. But to lose 6-1, but we have been absolutely superb. We have not let York do anything, <laughs> apart from win a free header in the first 10 minutes. We have, we've, we've closed them down. We've been to every first, second, and third ball. That been. It, it's, it's been the most all-round excellent performance from guys that I can remember for, for years, in honesty. I think you summed it up pretty well there, Chris. <laughs> well, it's not over yet. 6-1. Even we can't mess this up, Carl. <laughs> Six minutes to go. The Lions are absolutely... Dominable form here tonight against York City. Throwing comes from Rooney as uh, York try to get a bit of pride restored. They have the ball on the edge of the area though now. Klukowski has to go back here. Johnson cuts in field. Absolutely misses the ball. A complete air shot. And uh, it's back here with Rooney. Takes a shot from distance. Looks like it's going out for a corner. But uh, it's held by the goalkeeper, Maxted, before it goes over the line. And ironic cheers from the New York fans on when it's not going for it. just goes, and do you know what that goes to show, Chris, though? Confidence and how badly players can respond when, when the confidence is gone. And to yeah. Johnson's been a good player all, all night, but he's he's actually just uh, going to be feeling the pressure and the effects of being on the side that's 6-1 down. And what a difference the confidence has been amongst the Geisy players <coughs> yeah, this I mean, evening. We've, we've, as I say, we've passed it well, the movement's been great. And you wouldn't expect this performance. This is, I mean, let's be fair, this is quite out of nowhere because confidence is something that, on the whole, we sh by rights, in the way we've been this season, we shouldn't have any. <laughs> you know, we should be demoralised week in, week out. But performances have improved. Now there's a flick on. From there. Well, that's Rankin is going looking oh. for it, but he's a judge <laughs> to have fouled Camjo. That's a battle of giants, isn't it? Rankin and Camjo. I'm not really... Uh convinced there was much wrong actually with the way Michael Rankin attacked that ball but uh, I don't think the referee wants to necessarily take any chances in those <laughs> circumstances given the state of the game as it stands with guys leading by six goals to one I like I keep to repeat, yeah I was gonna you up yeah six one Picked up by Perver again, guys, he's still pressing. Adam Boy's on the left-hand side, into the box. Rankin goes chasing, Fry gets there just ahead of him, hoofs the ball clear. Guys, he throws. I'm trying to think if we've had many sort of chances that we haven't taken. Uh, and, and times when uh, Kyle Leatherham's 
you know, we've often said, I don't think we've been too many, but we've been clinical. And again, there's a word we've never used for Canada before. Not, at, uh, not since our time in the National League, anyway. But Lawler well, just doing ever so well to defend a rather speculative high ball inside the centre circle, but he showed the determination and will to win it. It goes all the way through to the goalkeeper. I'm very pleased we're filming this game tonight because I can't <laughs> wait for this highlights package. I think there'll be a 40 minute gap in the middle of it, but. Uh... <laughs> uh, only the highlights. <laughs> Guys are pressing again. Heslop's been caught out by Preston for a moment there. Preston, of course, got his goal from capitalising from such a situation. Now the uh, ball's picked up by Pervo and he just overhits it as he goes to pick out Preston on the edge of the 18 yard box and it rolls through to Leatherin. First of the season, Carl. That's, that feels like a weight off the shoulders. Still a long way to go, isn't there, though, for us? In, in, yeah. I, I thought maybe this game was like three and a half minutes, Carl. But Lawler plays a long ball forward up towards Rankin. He can't uh, get the ball on that occasion. Football cliche, winning breathes confidence. Oh, nice. Got to hope that that certainly applies in this case. Well, winning plural. <laughs> One win. It doesn't make a season, does it? Hatfield lays the ball back to goalkeeper Maxted. And uh, he just hoofed the ball clear. Actually, perfectly one. between the two stands, by the way, rather than crashing onto one of the roofs. It's uh, last three minutes of this game. Guys, he really... Uh, I've obviously won it. 6-1 to the good. <laughs> <laughs> Even I dare say that now. But uh, with the last couple of minutes, we're uh, just defending... As York City, I think we'd like to get something back for that travelling fans, just restore a little bit of pride. I think uh, that might have uh, been long gone as the uh, visiting fans are beginning to trickle out here and throw in for the Lions just in front of us. So we'll wait to see how many added minutes there'll be. I suspect there won't be too many. I think you'll be scored in this half. Uh, two. Mm. There's three subs, two's... Uh, I reckon you put it up about three or four. I think three. Ball's all the way back with Max said it's an academic affair at the moment. What we're watching at the moment it does have the feel of a uh, practice session. And uh, we're just sort of waiting for the clock to tick down. I think you'll need to practice some more. Yeah, well, that's for sure. We're back, of course, playing York in November, the 29th, I think it is, at uh, Booth and Crescent. Yeah, it's a Tuesday night trip. I suspect that'll have more meaning as well for the for our visitors tonight. Help with our refusers in Jack. We will certainly want to uh, avenge this particular defeat. <laughs> the last few minutes here, just playing out. Not surprisingly, the Man of the Match award <laughs> has been given to Jermaine Hilton, who's had an absolutely tremendous game. He's been replaced by this man, Adam Boys, who's battling currently at the moment down by the corner flag, trying to win guys the, the ball back inside the York penalty area. Now Rankin's into the fray. The uh, visitors hold firm on this occasion, but Walton steps across and wins the ball back again. This time it's up towards Rankin. He nods it back into the area. Frey manages to get enough of a foot onto it to take the ball away. And uh, York still struggling to get out from that corner flag. Eventually do so, nodded on now by uh, Murdoch into the path of uh, Jan Klukowski. <coughs> Klukowski's just held up here by Preston. And uh, eventually, the ball moves down this right-hand side with Johnson. He cuts it infield. Tackle comes in, though, and Pre Perver just takes the ball. And again, he's another player who's had an excellent afternoon. Cleve, uh, Cleve tries to play it through the left flank. And wins the ball back. Keeps possession and wins Geisy a free kick. Well, I make it just about 90 now. So 30 seconds to go until we find out, presumably, how many minutes of added time there will be. Hope enough for a seventh. <laughs> and uh, we'll wait to see. <laughs> Four way drivers, this is going to take a screwdriver with his yacht just in case. I don't get it. Fuse box, electrical, something. Ah, uh, no, no. I see, yeah. Now I get it. I thought it sounded more sinister than that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, don't read that one out, Chris. <coughs> Only two minutes. Two minutes, just in case. <laughs> well, it might be for, I don't know, unscrewing McNamara's name off his manager's door. I don't know. There's also nice cream, I remember. I don't know if you can still get it. I remember it in the 80s, anyway. A piece of chewing gum at the bottom. That's called a screwdriver. Yeah, screwball. Screwball, that was it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's something else. 80s ice cream references. That's what you get on Guys in the Rate. That and dodgy Bee Gees impressions. 
throw in for uh, York City midway through the Geisy half. You just don't want to concede one now, actually, don't you? Just to, to complete the night. You don't want to end up on any sort of slightly despondent note. I think the comeback's off. That's for sure. York just able to hold possession. But again, Geisy managing the game very well, looking solid in organisation and shape. <coughs> Something you've always felt sometimes at this season. Tonight has been excellent. Helped by the fact that we got those quick fire goals in the first half. York have a throw on the right hand side. As they try to uh, press, they manage to fluff their lines once again and knock the ball straight out of play for a guysy throw. I've got to wonder, with this level of game management that we're putting into it, actually, just you know, is, is that the impact of Dave Penny perhaps? Because obviously, having somebody that's been in the game as long as he has is, uh, is certainly having a good effect so far. Picked up now by York again, Danny Galbraith looking for options, and spinning on the ball but unable to find an angle. <coughs> As, uh, guys, they just uh, try to keep York at bay for one last time, perhaps. Johnson unable to get past Danny Lowe. Again, he's had a, a very solid <coughs> afternoon at fullback. It's that evening, even. I keep calling it afternoon. It might as well be after. We might be playing that at the afternoon by the time we finish this game. Keep looking at the uh, clock. 10:30. Goodness me! <coughs> Should be in bed by now. You've got work tomorrow. I know oh. I have. Yeah. It's worth it though for this. It is. It is that. It is that note when you realise you're uh, you're going to bed when you're not get your full complement of hours that you should be able. <laughs> you should need to get to before you have to get up in the next morning. That says it all. The cheer and the applause from a very happy Nethermore, and we haven't had that too often this season. But Geisley have been dominant. Oh, just take this in. Geisley 6, York City 1. <laughs>